Okay, welcome back. Uh, this particular segment is on mold. Now, I get a number of uh, home inspection clients, uh, buyers just like yourself, who are very concerned about mold. Now, mold is one of a million uh, environmental contaminants. There's meth and mold and lead and radon, asbestos, carbon monoxide, you know, termites. Uh, but mold gets a lot of press, and a lot of people are aware of the uh, health effects associated with mold. So let's talk about that, what causes it, and what to do about it. Stuff you got to know before you go buying a house uh, that may contain mold. So basically, mold is a living organism. Uh, in order to survive, it has to have uh, water and something that is or used to be wood. Now. I've seen, for example, where you get uh, a moss that grows on maybe on concrete um, on the inside of the house. Uh, that would not be a mold because uh, we've, we're mixing concrete and water. And uh, what we need for mold is, uh, is wood and water. So wood can be cardboard, it can be papers, um, it can be uh, sheetrock, uh, it can be framing any of that. So if you're uh, if you got those two together, um, here comes the the first mold particle and um, you know not surprisingly this is going to be a particle that says hey I want to eat and live and reproduce and create this big massive mold colony. Um, <laughs> that's what the mold does, spore wants to do. There's a million varieties of mold but we're not going to get into that. Um, so here it comes through the front door, and by the way, every time you open your front door or your window or whatever, you're, uh, you're getting some mold spores to come and some mold spores to go. There is no place other than perhaps a clean room, um, maybe where they're making microchips or whatever. That's about the only place on planet Earth that you won't find mold spores. So you need to understand that it's part of the environment. So here they come, and let's say we've got a roof leak. Uh, maybe it's a dormer, uh, which is one of those windows that kind of uh, pokes out uh, above the roof line. And maybe we've got a flashing problem or, uh, you know, let, let's say that that's the water source. Or maybe it's a uh, leaking plumbing line underneath your bathroom sink. So drip, drip, drip. Uh, it's continuous. And... and the area is getting wet, the, uh, the mold spore lands there and says, hey, this is awesome, I've got food forever and this is beautiful. So it lands there, it eats, it reproduces. Now instead of having one or two mold spores, we have a couple of million and now this is going to affect your health. Um, I am one of the people that is affected by mold. Um, I, I can feel my lungs tighten up when I get into a room that's, uh, that's got a lot of mold. I'm not going to tell you that uh, mold's not a problem because it definitely can be. I've seen, uh, I have one story where I showed up to do, uh, they called me to do a mold test and I says, hey, I can do you better than that. I'm gonna find out, find out why there's mold and then we're gonna eliminate that and then I, you don't have to pay me for the test. What happened there is the, um, the condensation from the furnace was draining down underneath the concrete. Now, the, the concrete floor in a basement is called a slab. It's just horizontal concrete. And um, what happened is they were draining that water underneath the slab, and now it's under pressure, so it goes over about 18 inches and comes up into the nearby bedroom uh, where there's carpet, and now we're growing mushrooms and just grossness, and yeah, they had, a, they had a mold problem down there. So I didn't need to do the mold test. I could see that there was mushrooms, I knew that there was mold, and I says, hey, in order to solve this problem, we don't need to do a test. We need to get that water from that furnace to go into the drain instead of into the ground where it's coming back up over here. So um, this is the kind of thing you want to pay attention to. If something is wet, uh, the mold colony will get started. Now, we have all seen uh, homes under construction, maybe they're in the uh, framing mode, they're not what's called dried in, which means that uh, they've got a roof uh, of sorts on there and now the rain and the snow is not gonna result in water inside the house. But you've seen where um, you've got framed homes that are not dried in yet 
and uh, there's water, there's snow there, and, and then the question becomes, well, if a little bit of water in a house causes mold, then this particular home has uh, water everywhere. And the question is then, why is that not a mold problem? And the answer is because that wood is not going to remain wet enough, long enough, to cause a mold problem. Yeah, you know, if, let's say it rains, now the entire floor is soaked, uh, the, mold uh, the mold spores land there and they go, oh yeah, this is awesome, you're going to start to reproduce. But in a day or two, um, it's dry. So now the, uh, there's nothing left for the mold spores to eat. They're going to die off and uh, go somewhere else. So you need, a, um, you need a set of conditions that results in wet wood for a longer period of time. Uh, sometimes I've seen where maybe you know, you've got a water source, uh, maybe from the roof, maybe it was from snow, and then the winter stops happening, <coughs> and you, you get into June, July, August, and now it's dry. And now that is, uh, it looks like mold. Everything about it looks like mold, but it's a mold history. <coughs> those spores are dead. And uh, as such, they are not nearly the, uh, the risk that, uh, that live spores are. Um, so, moral of this story. What I'm going to do is, is for mice, for example, uh, another living organism, it's looking for food. Um, let's say that we were to drop pizza on the floor and let's say we were to leave it there, and you know, days go by, eventually the mice are gonna find this pizza. We're gonna go, oh crap, we've got mice now in our house. What to do about that? Let's set traps, let's set poisons, let's do a moat, let's, let's do you know, whatever. Um, as long as that pizza is there, the mice are still gonna find it, they're gonna eat it. Um, so for me, you know, maybe even set a nightly guard to shoot any mice that you see. You know, you, you could take those kinds of steps, or you could pick up the pizza and eliminate it. And, you know, that's me. I'm, I'm the guy who will recommend that you eliminate the reason why the uh, organism is there, whether that organism be mice or whether it be mold. Um, rather than uh, spray Clorox, for example, on a mold patch, um, Clorox will kill it, but the next day the Clorox is gone and the area is still wet and it's going to start over again. So <coughs> the, uh, the fix is to identify and eliminate the reason why the mold is there. And then you're going to, uh, you know, once that's done, the area will dry out. Uh, now you get a mold history and you can uh, either address that for aesthetics or not. Uh, assuming that it hasn't gone so far as to actually be a structural problem. Uh, now it's a mold history and you can just, you can deal with it on a much less high priority level. Stuff you gotta know before you go buying your next home, that's mold. I'm the home medic. <laughs>